going on everybody Dana Worthy here um, it's been a while since I've started a new video series and um, I still get a lot of questions about uh, the same topic of uh, Photoshop and PSD work and so I wanted to put together a, a, a quick little series uh, segmented series on the essentials uh, Photoshop's uh, tools and skills that a web developer needs. I'm um, trying some new stuff here with the webcam and uh, in true redneck Arkansas fashion got a shot of my gun safe in the back. Just moved offices a couple days ago and so it's a little bit of a mess but anyway um, we're gonna present this in uh, six or seven parts we'll see how things go um, but uh, I want to go over the initial setup of Photoshop I want to go over simple navigating around uh, and then uh, another one with working with text and and stuff like that um, mix in a little bit of uh, sizing and stuff um, then I want to uh, go over exactly how to the methods of cutting out an image then extracting information through layers um, that would be something like cover color overlays gradients uh, rounded corners stuff like that um, and then uh, actually uh, saving an image uh, that's something that isn't always cut and dry uh, e easy to do there's a lot of ways to do that and so we'll cover the best way to, to save an image for the web so um, like I said earlier this is a series designed for web developers not necessarily web designers if you're in Visual Studio all day or inside of Ruby on Rails spend a lot of your time in the database um, this is what this series is geared towards um, a lot of the times you're gonna be working on a project and you'll need a quick fix for an image or something like that and it, it's it's really a, a hassle to go and get a designer or a creative person to um, cut out a simple image uh, it's really important to be able to do that skill yourself um, it makes you more self-sufficient and um, I'm a true believer in the full stack web developer somebody who can take a PSD implement the HTML CSS and then also build out the uh, code behind and, and the database servers so anyway let's dive in and uh, and take a look at the initial setup for um, Photoshop so what we have in front of us is uh, the PSD that I used in, in the uh, the PSD to HTML uh, series. We're going to go over uh, various things here, um, uh, techniques of pulling out text, cutting out, and all that fun stuff. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is go into uh, the Photoshop settings and tweak it to uh, best fit our needs. Um, this uh, I'm I'm using I believe uh, Photoshop CS5 or 4. It's it's a few versions back, but everything it remains the same. Um, and so I'm to to get into your your settings. You're going to go over to Edit and navigate down to Preferences and hit uh, General, or you can just press Control K. And so our our initial uh, tab of General. There's not a whole lot here. We're going to change. Uh, there's there's some animated zoom uh, stuff here that uh, it's not not a huge deal uh, interface uh, this is personal preference file ha handling nothing here we really need to work with performance this one's going to be really important to work with um, in the top left of this sc uh, screen I wonder if hold on let's see yeah uh, the top left of the screen we have um, our available RAM well. Karnak totally is messing that up. Um, available RAM. Right now it's set to the default of 60%. Uh, I don't like that. I run three versions of Visual Studio. Usually I have Minecraft running sometimes and some stupid Steam game I'm farming Steam trading cards off of. Also I have Visual uh, or um, Microsoft SQL Server running. Tons of stuff. I don't want Photoshop to be eating up all my memory. Somebody who needs 60% uh, of their, their RAM to uh, for Photoshop is somebody on the designer side. Um, I'm gonna set mine to 4,000 meg, or about four gigs. Um, that's gonna give it just enough uh, space to work with. Um, and then down here on the bottom part of our, uh, our, our screen, uh, we have scratch disk. Now this is a really interesting feature of Photoshop. What this does is it kind of acts like a um, uh, additional RAM. It, it'll read and write your history to this. Um, I have a solid state drive 
So I definitely don't want this to be set to that. Um, it's it's good for this not to be on your OS drive. It's good to be on a secondary or external drive. That way, um, it, it provides two streams of reading and writing uh, for performance. On the bottom right hand side of this, we have GPU settings. Now, if you have a uh, oop, if you have a a uh, high performing video card. I, I'm SLIing GTX uh, 560s right now and so it works really well with mine but um, there's a few uh, nice options that um, uh, graphical options available here to to enhance your overall experience. So that's all we really want to mess with on uh, performance for now. We're going to go over to cursor. This is more uh, personal preferences. Transparency, don't really care a whole lot about. Units and rulers, this one's going to be really important to, uh, for us. Uh, pixels and type on the top part of this um, are going to be really important. By default, I believe they are in um, inches and points. We, we're working in the web. We don't care about inches and points. We care about pixels. Um, and so we want to make sure those are set to pixels before we uh, get to work. Grid uh, guides, grids, and slices. This isn't going to be super important to us. This is, again, more personal preferences. Uh, plugins, nothing there for us. Type, again, nothing in there for us. 3D, haven't messed with any of this stuff. I don't think it's really applicable to what we'll be doing. I'm going to go in and click OK and to make sure those settings are saved. Now, uh, a few of the other things we need to be uh, aware of is kind of our window layout. Um, so if you uh, look at our screen, we, I have um, four primarily four primary windows open. Um, I have the toolbar on the left, then I have the info tab on the far right, then I have a character in paragraph one, and then my layers. Now um, to open these, if they ever get closed, you can go up to the top menu uh, and select window. Uh, Zoom it doesn't like that. And then select uh, your various menus that you want. Now, one of the cool Photoshop features here is that you can actually save your workspace. Um, oh, cool, so I am in CS5. Um, so by default, it's set to Essentials. Uh, but if I wanted to, let's see, go ahead and save this. Uh, web, call it web. Um, if I wanted to, uh, let's say you're working inside of um, something a little bit uh, I don't know. Say you're wanting your layout different. Um, you can always create your own uh, layout and then save it here and and uh, change to it real quickly. Um, oh, that's cool. Um, so somebody who would be into animation or something like that could use this one. Um, I always create my own um, workspace and make sure to save it in case I accidentally close some windows. So that way I can just change the window back to what it was. Anyway, that sums up our initial setup of um, that's set, that's the, uh, the the gist of us setting up Photoshop before we actually start working with it. Um, I really hope uh, you guys enjoy this setup. Let me give me some feedback. Let me know if uh, I should ditch the webcam um, or incorporate a little bit more. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate all the feedback over the the the, the few months of inactivity. Um, really working hard to try and get you guys more videos. So um, hope you enjoy it and we'll see you on the next one.